Time for another episode of The Deep Dive. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Zeb, and this podcast is powered by Liquify. Liquify is an infra service provider that helps both upcoming and established Web3 projects run smoothly. As such, Liquify has a wide network of partners, similar to the project of our guest today, which is also, again, a partner with Liquify. Today, we got Noah from Tokensoft. Welcome. Thank you so much, Zeb. Great to be here. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. And I think Tokensoft is a well-known name, but perhaps you can give it like a very quick summary of like two sentences. What is Tokensoft? Yeah, absolutely. So Tokensoft is the leader in compliant token launches and distributions. We've been around for about seven years, uh, launched the first to SEC registered tokens on Ethereum. Over the past seven years, we've helped over 100 projects launch and manage hundreds of different token and compliance events and help them raise uh, over a billion dollars. Yeah, and some of these are, well, tokens everyone knows and some are a bit new. Like uh, I saw Tezos, which is really an old one. I remember Tezos launching, that was the biggest ICO of mm-hmm. that time. And you also have new ones. I believe uh, Benqui I saw, which is, not a small DeFi platform these days. And yeah, um, right. even blasts from the past, like LimeWire is also there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we, we helped uh, LimeWire more recently. Dimension uh, did some support for, with them last year. Manta Network, BitCountry, Connects Network to uh, Moonbeam McCall, the two largest parachain auctions. So our, our goal is basically to help communities focus on what matters most. And um, the long-term vision is that we can be token management software yeah so it's a very wide range of projects is there one that you immediately think of that would be interesting to highlight a little bit of what you guys did with them that was a bit more special yeah sure thing so connects network was an awesome project for us to work with uh we uh helped them with their airdrop this past year and uh connects network is cross-chain messaging protocol um we're really good friends with the founder Arjun, as well as the team that's over there, um, longtime friends. I think we were real close to them back when we had some offices in San Francisco. Uh, and we helped them run the first uh, natively cross-chain airdrop where individuals could actually come and claim their tokens. And when they were claiming, decide which token or which blockchain they wanted to receive their tokens on. And uh, we're able to you know, help lots of people claim that airdrop last summer. And um, yeah, it was a blast. I think that's like a first, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a first. Um, so we actually integrated that infrastructure into our platform and the XERC20 token standard. Uh, if you're using the ERC20 token, then would highly recommend it. Definitely could chill it. Um, happy to introduce anyone to the Connects team. But that, that token standard basically has a few extra parameters in the UI on the token uh, that allows it to uh, move natively cross chain and make tokens like first class citizens for them. And so we were able to help them you know, put that infrastructure uh, to work with their, uh, with their own airdrop. Yeah, and also because you're talking about an ERC standard, I think this is a good moment to ask, like with Tokensoft, okay, it's regulatory compliant, but is it permissioned? Like, do you hold uh, custody? What What's the deal there with Tokensoft? Yeah, great question. So with Tokensoft, we sit in the middle, um, really in uh, in a way that makes us different from any other launch platform. So we have the compliance pieces to be, you know, the leader in compliant token launches, but then, uh, you know, that's very much web two type compliance stuff. But then <clears throat> our, our platform is uh, actually on chain. It's crypto native. So people log in with their, their crypto wallet into our platform. And then uh, any project that's launching through our platform uh, is whether they're running some sort of sale event or dis- token distribution event, uh, they use our UI to deploy a contract on chain for which they're the admins. So it's all non-custodial and we're never taking, you know, custody of the tokens either for the point of distributing to people later or, um, you know, the funds that are coming in through a sale. Yeah, that's definitely a nice balance. And uh, also, again, quite special. Yeah. Yeah. And with Tokensoft, so that is the the company. And then... I found out there's also a community. So what is the community called? 
So yeah, our community, uh, in terms of how they've organized uh, over the past you know, year or so, is uh, the Soft Owl. So that that's what they've, they've called themselves. Yeah, it's, it's it's rather new. They're still really in the process of launching. I think they just recently bridged over uh, to base, or are in the process of doing that now. And uh, the Soft Owl. Uh, so it, it it essentially they're pushing forward, they're supporting, they're stewarding on-chain primitives that power our platform under the hood, um, as well as the vision you know, to support other high integrity protocols throughout the space. So is it a large community or is it more like um, really experts that came together that want to help? Yeah, good question. We, we've seen... Um, so I know when the community launched and there was a, a, the Discord was created, I think like 40,000 ish people joined within a matter of a few hours. <laughs> right. uh, so it was a little crazy. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, this was uh, before the FTX collapse, uh, certainly during uh, crypto winter, things were a little bit quieter, but I know it's recently added another 10,000 or so members to the discord uh, as they continue to build out. So yeah, it's pretty large. It's, I think it's actually one of the largest test net communities that's there as well. I, um, Soft ran several, incentivized test nets um we know to an airdrop of its soft token uh and in those test nets there were you know tens of thousands of people that tested some of the primitives on cello and some other uh l2s and the soft token what does it do do you know yeah it's a governance token uh of and of course yeah and uh that's that's the main function i think there'll be the communities continuing to see the other avenues the other utilities that the the token can provide um, and I know there's been some talk of uh, the token uh, being used as well for you know gating uh, to different events and maybe projects that are using those on-chain primitives. Okay, yeah, it is very interesting to see this play out, like uh, uh, the the soft DAO for TokenSoft because so TokenSoft itself, like you deal with tokens, but will you have a token yourself? No, no, TokenSoft itself won't, will not have a token. Um, yeah, not everything needs a token up, <laughs> as <laughs> we've all seen over there. the past few years, right? <laughs> I definitely agree there. Let's uh, speed it up a little bit, and we're going to do the high throughput questionnaire. We always do this with our guests. Six short questions, and just answer with one word, or at least try. And the first question will be, if I weren't in the crypto space, I would probably be... Oh, man. Uh... <laughs> Forestry. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, there you go. It's yeah. always something different. So it's always fun to ask. Um, then you got to choose now. Private or public sales? Public. And what is your personal guilty pleasure token within crypto? A Luna. Totally wrecked me. <laughs> Sorry. That's your guilty word. pleasure or your... <laughs> well, it was guilty pleasure at the time. Then afterwards, yeah. it was just guilty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see. <laughs> a bit more uh, serious one. Do you believe more in a hard cap or in a till inflation for a uh, blockchain? Mm, that's a really good question. Uh, are we still on the one words or uh, am I getting Yeah, well, two in this case, right? Till inflation <laughs> is two words and hard cap is also. <laughs> but you can explain a little bit if you want to. Hard cap. The hard cap. Okay. Yeah. And why? Go ahead. Why? <laughs> uh, it it depends. Uh, so, I mean, the longer answer is it totally depends on the, the use case of the blockchain and what they're looking to do. But I, I just think if if you have unpredictable inflation um then it causes it just adds a lot of uncertainty to the entire chain i, I think we're seeing this right now with you know ethereum's talking about changing its instrument schedule a little bit and the way that its supply curve works and um yeah it just adds a bunch of uncertainty to the future that i don't know if that's necessary so then uh, a question i often ask also in this one is um on-chain or off-chain governance how do you feel about that one Once again, I think it depends on the use case, uh, but we're doing one word. Um, Off-chain. 
All right, all right. Because with Ethereum, I think one of the, the things also that makes this even more complicated is that the governance is off-chain. Like uh, sometimes with uh, the fund that I also work with, Cyber Capital, we discuss about DAOs going into a direction that we don't like, but then we're like, yeah, but it is a DAO. They're doing it decentralized. Yeah, this is what we stand <laughs> for, right? They are choosing it. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the longer answer there would be like, I like get depend. So it depends on what topics. Like, I think some things should be off chain. I think some things should be on chain. And I think if you're trying to run like on chain, like a lot of the technological developments on chain and that part of the governance, I think that can be very difficult and slow, especially during this time period of blockchain, like as the but space before the issuance. technology develops. Yeah. Yeah. A change and then, of still issuance, perhaps. Yeah. So, off yeah, something along those lines. Or, right. sorry, a change of issuance. Yeah. You said. On chain for that. Yeah, I agree with you there. All right, last uh, quick one. One thing I love about TokenSoft is building. <laughs> Great one. And you also uh, were like uh, double thinking about like private or public sale for a moment. What made you choose one over the other? Well, I think it depends a little bit on definition of terms. Um, so if you're defining a public sale as a sale without any compliance, then I'd say private. Uh, but if you're defining it as it's generally open, but based off of, you know, people needing to meet some compliance requirements, then I think public sale is better. Because I think at the end of the day, getting an incentivized community in early with what projects are building, um, you know, show that, that, that like there's, there's a lot of power in that, basically. I think part of the reason Ethereum is so, has done so well over the long term is that there was a core group of you know several thousand people, maybe more than several thousand, that are up bigly um, on their tokens, <laughs> and you know like it can go down fifty or seventy five percent, and they're still up like ten or twenty x, and like they're just they're they're lifetime contributors basically, and I think there's a ton of power in that. Good, well thought answer. Yeah. yeah. Now, I also want to dive a little bit deeper in TokenSoft because, well. It helps uh, projects launch a token. Everyone knows it for that. But also in your first quick summary, you mentioned it being a token management platform. So how should we look at that? Yeah, so in the past, we've been primarily focused on those public sales. And uh, we initially started as a white label platform. Those shifted to be more of kind of a traditional launch pad. And now we've shifted kind of back to being white labeled, but with some launch pad functionalities, um, uh, compliant functionalities there uh, that sets us apart. Um, but the goal really is we want to work with projects who are more of the full life cycle of what they're doing with their token. And so we want to be the token management system. Um, you know, long term, the vision is that TokenSoft is for tokens and we streamline token management. We want to unblock builders. So I don't know how you can be in this space for a long time without having some belief that this is going somewhere that's like helpful to humanity. And I kind of see crypto as like nuclear technology, tremendous power, can't be uninvented. And the question is, are we going to leave all the building to bad actors in the space? Or are we going to like, you know, help the good actors? And if you're a good actor, then I think there has to be some consideration given to compliance, but that's not your main innovation. And so we don't want builders to be distracted with that, which can be very complicated, difficult, and very risky. Um, so we want to unblock them by basically being a little bit of a garbage disposal and ingesting all this junk and then just like, you know, making it smooth. Yeah, it's, uh, it definitely resonates with me. Also, because yeah. with Liquify, we help a lot of projects that are really being innovative, but they don't want to mm -hmm. deal with running, let's say, an uh, archival node. Because it's well. You what do they hate the most? What do you, what do you, yeah? What do you, what do they hate doing the most, Zeb? What can we pick up for them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, this is the thing. They really want to help decentralization, but they also want to focus right. on their project's innovation. So this is something where Liquify can help out with the infra, running the infra mm -hmm. in a like bare metal decentralized way, through, for instance, things where we are also large participants like uh, decentralized RPC networks. And then with, I used to work in a grants team and uh, yeah, management tools are definitely at the early stages. So I can definitely see mm -hmm. a lot to be won there also for TokenSoft. You also help yeah. with grants, don't you? 
Yeah, we uh, we help uh, projects basically administer their grant programs. Because if you're going to do that, then normally there's several pieces. Like just to run a grants program, you got to post the information somewhere about it. Then you need to like figure out who's registered for it. And then you need to, you know, basically send them or you need to do KYC or on them or maybe KYB if it's an entity. Uh, and then you need to send them documents and then you need to distribute tokens. And right now, if you're not using something, you know, like Tokensoft using our platform, then you're going to end up doing all of those things in different places. And it just adds so much headache and so much time. We can stream on all that, put it in one spot for you. And, um, you know, kind of going back to like, you know, us working with a full life cycle. One of the things we've seen over the past several years, we've seen projects spending, you know, months and months, like a year to get launched and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on legal fees. And it's just not necessary. And so we've we've worked to streamline the setup of that token legal structure so that it takes just a matter of weeks and you know, basically an order of magnitude less in terms of cost. So we want to do stuff like that throughout the whole life cycle and you know, work with products through everything that they're doing. Yeah, there's a lot of overspending happening due to yeah. not enough knowledge on these things. Did like, did you see that those issues with the grants? Like, you know, kind of that headache around the logistics app? Um yeah, I will say that um, I actually am wearing a shirt of Balancer, which nice. I was a grant lead ad. Uh, and we, I would say we were very careful about the overspending part, but with the managing tools, yeah, sure, there's definitely stuff that could be better. Of course, we use Gnosis mm -hmm. Safe, and Gnosis Safe is awesome, but yeah, yeah, like every grant program is building it from the ground up again, and there's not this, this, uh, this e because most of these people have not done any of that before they are all crypto yeah. lovers and they're not necessarily grant committee members <laughs> so yeah there's a lot to be won there uh, yeah easily yeah and then getting it like white labeled too because one of the other things that's just crazy yeah. i've seen with projects and you know it's like hey join our community Here's our Telegram, Discord, Twitter, Discourse Forum. Don't forget to go to Tally for governance. Um, we're doing, yeah. you know, KYC, KYB on this other provider over here. And then, like, here's the Gnosis safe you got to go to. Like, it's just, like, it's, it's, it's too much. It's too much. Yeah. So, like, let's yeah. put that in one spot for both the builders and the community. And uh, with grants, do you have any examples that have, like, with airdrops, you mentioned connects. A lot of people know that right. one. Is there any that does the grants with you? Yeah, so we work with the Graph. Um, we did their token launch a long time ago. So, you know, awesome players in the space. Uh, they're yeah. building just some amazing infrastructure that's truly crypto native, decentralized. So they're great actors. We've been longtime friends with the Graph, and uh, we still work with them around the compliance with administering some of their grant ambassador programs. And we've also started to work with, even on a smaller basis, with some of the contributing DAOs that are essentially yeah, taking some of these grants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there's like 30. Really yeah, cool. so, mm -hmm. yeah. so we work yeah. with those that we've you know, gotten deeper in the ecosystem with some of the DAOs as well. Yeah. Yeah, there is also within uh, um, the graph, you have, I think by now, five or maybe even more technical teams that work on it, which is really, uh, yeah, that doesn't happen often. Like with Ethereum, you have multiple clients and Solana is catching up. Most layer ones just don't have multiple clients, but almost no dApps, to call it that way. Like the graph has multiple teams separately working on it. It's really uh, admirable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We also do custom uh, subgraphs with Liquify. So we are very well familiar with the graph. Uh, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a great project. Yeah. It's nice yeah, that you've been with them so long. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. So when you're talking about um, the whole life cycle, and you already mentioned a little bit about uh, helping projects spend less on um, on lawyer fees, basically for regulatory. Uh, is regular? Do you do regulatory as a service, or are you uh, like uh, advisors? Uh, what kind of role not, do you play? Yeah, yeah. Well, not legal counsel, right? That's always the call. The disclaimer. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, no, so happens. we actually, uh, I mean, obviously, having worked with over 100 projects, we've had no hacks, no SEC enforcement actions. Um, we've certainly seen a lot of uh, 
certainly can give our thoughts on a lot of things around launching and different compliance angles to take. Um, but then from, you know, more of our offerings in terms of software services, we do partner with providers on, you know, both offshore counsel and onshore counsel here in the U.S., um, as well as like directors and kind of registered secretaries offices in some offshore jurisdictions to bit, bit help projects set up their, their token legal structure. Um, yeah, and you mentioned it uh, here in the U.S. So you guys are based in the U.S. and not leaving? <laughs> love the usa uh so no no plans no plans to leave uh yeah i mean i i guess some some thoughts there on that and i'd be curious to get your thoughts as well uh, on some of the sev since um you well i guess you didn't leave the us uh but you aren't in your home no. country <laughs> <laughs> that is true i left my home country in europe yeah that's true yeah yeah so uh but i mean okay on, on like a personal level um you know Personally, not not speaking for tokens off on a personal level, like, you know, I'm a Christian, have a peace with whatever comes, God's in control. And I see my like role, not just in crypto, but in all kind of spheres of life is trying to be salt and light. And like salt has like a preserving effect. Um, you can look at the world at a, from a physics perspective, entropy is happening. The world is literally coming apart. Um, and so, and, you know, our goal is to try to like stop the decay. Um, and also be light and like, you know, pointing toward the truth and, and toward God. And that, that's me on a personal level. And so within, what does that look like in crypto? Um, I mean, I think that means, you know, I love my home. I love the USA and I want to see it continue um, to do well. And I want to have like, you know, kind of be a force for good. Uh, we have, you know, I'd say a value and on a second point, like a value of like the DAO um, of our community. Uh, what they have is reasonable rebels. And I think there's roles for a lot of different individuals. Um, I think, you know, the community and a little bit of the ethos of even Tokensoft as well is being a reasonable rebel, which is like, hey, we want to we want to push for and we believe in many of the values of crypto. Um, but we also want to make sure that, you know, projects are remaining compliant. Um, and, you know, we can shift the, you know, the Overton window and the direction and the, and the swing the pendulum toward freedom over time. Um, so those are a couple of thoughts uh, about, you know, why, why not to leave and kind of approach to take when, when operating in the U.S. right now? Quite the thoughts. I mean, you don't yeah. often hear Christianity, physics, and reasonable rebels <laughs> in a row. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say that's too far from some of America's like founding values, though. To be honest, right? If you get yeah, back, oh, like sure. I, I think crypto, crypto is very American, in my opinion. Uh, you know, <laughs> in in the sense of like it embodies a lot of American values. Obviously, the technology. There's some amazing things happening. Uh, maybe even more so outside the U.S. right now. But yeah, in terms of a lot of the values, I think there's an angle you can take there. So I mean, you're talking about um, like bringing the light and uh, that you want to preserve also. And mm -hmm. so would you, for projects that are in the U.S., would you tell them to stay and fight? Or, uh, or is it something that you're fighting towards that they will stay in the future, but for now, maybe not the best idea? <laughs> Like I, I think there's a path to be able to work in crypto in the U.S. What that looks like, the particularities, got to figure that out with counsel. It depends on what you're doing. There's a lot of stuff that's happening in crypto that I don't think is really good for anyone. So, you mm -hmm. know, uh, but there's a lot of stuff that is good. And I, I think there's a way uh, to figure out a structure and to figure out a path to, to build in the space um, without having to leave the U.S., um, and yeah, it just depends um, on what you're looking to do. Like I said, I mean, we've helped, you know, over 100 projects, many of whom have contributors that are in the U.S. Um, we've helped them launch without any hacks or you know, SEC enforcement actions over the years. And I don't think the structure and the framework has really changed much um, there. Uh, you know, typically what we see projects doing around sales is... Uh, not allowing unaccredited U.S. investors. And if they do allow U.S. investors um, that are accredited, then they generally want to lock up the tokens for a period of time to put distance between the primary and secondary offering. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of like on a basic level. Then there's lots of different spectrums within approaches within the distributions and legal structures. And um, we've been talking now about like more broader topics of regulatory. Right. And where that might go, but where do you see Tokensoft go? Let's say, uh, what is the the future of Tokensoft? You're be you're building this management platform in a couple of years. Where do you, where do you see it grow towards? 
Yeah. Yeah. And I, well, before we get there, I'd be remiss if I didn't go back to the previous point and say that doesn't mean that the regulatory environment, I think, is ideal. And when you talked about shift over to window, I, I, yeah. I do think some people have their head in the sand a little bit right now with like the current admi administration. And um, they think maybe it's just a matter of more education or stuff like that. And I don't think it is. I think it seems to me that it's actually really about control. And I think one of the critical things that people miss is people can look you straight in the eyes and say sincerely that they're working for good. And then you believe them. And so then you say they have good intentions, but that's the definition of, you know, being wrong or e even evil actually is that you b truly believe your intentions are good, but that's the issue is that your entire like perspective is off and has missed the mark. And so I don't think that like gets people off the hook necessarily, or means, you know, that everything's okay. <laughs> so, um, anyways, side tangent Shedding there, some but, light. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 go back. What was the next question? <laughs> Where you see TokenSoft be in a couple of years? Like, what is the yeah. the larger vision for TokenSoft? So, um, the larger vision for TokenSoft, like I, like I said earlier, I mean, the larger vision for TokenSoft is that TokenSoft is for tokens. We want to be a token management system. We want to unblock builders. Wait, we want to serve that full life cycle. Go ahead. But not everything needs a token. But but not everything is a token. A lot needs tokens. You do think? I that think in a couple of years we will tokenize everything, or at least a lot, so that will stay the core focus. I hope we don't tokenize everything. Uh, I think a world <laughs> where everything is financialized is probably pretty dystopian, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I think that there are many, many more things that are going to be tokenized than currently. And I think, you know, actually a lot of this, because of the current regulatory environment, because of this administration, because of some of the regulators we've had over the past 10 years, that's really slowed down the tokenization of many, many parts of society. Plus you have incumbents and a lot of other stuff. But I do think a lot of things will, a lot of things will be tokenized. And in that world, not just for tokens off, but for other people working in crypto, hey, the, the TAM here is unbelievable. Um, it's unbelievable. Like we're kind of, you know, you're basically looking at the global, what all the different global ledgers we have. And, you know, many, many of those will be tokenized. They may have a centralized player. Not everything is going to be decentralized per se. But if you have a centralized player that's helping to tokenize something, and then now that token, that thing that's tokenized is within an ecosystem with 24-7 global liquidity, programmability, and custody and transparency, like that's like a really big deal. It, it doesn't, even if the, you know, USDC is a great example, very centralized in terms of how it's administered, but very decentralized in terms of its use. So I, I do think we are headed there. And I, I, we, I think the token management system can be extremely compelling as we get there. But a lot of that is already there for token soft, right? So mm -hmm. I guess the, the vision would be to, to make it even better or will there be extra stuff added in let's say the next year or so yeah both definitely so um you know even better smoother there's always some bugs to iron out we're laughing about like mobile wallet connections i saw a tweet from someone how like mobile wallet you know, like if you're connecting on mobile on your phone trying to connect your wallet to a site like even the you know the best of the best websites and <laughs> sdks whatever for these wallet connect is still got some there's still some hiccups sometimes, basically. So yeah, make it, we want to make it a lot better. We also want to add a lot more features. We want to add more features, especially around like automating um, some of the uh, campaigns that projects might run that involve tokens, as well as um, adding more like intelligence analytics into our platform. Cool. You uh, mentioned campaigns, and it re this reminds me. So last podcast, we had Matt from Restaking Cloud. And he had a question for you. If TokenSoft will ever offer points as a service, how would that look like? Yeah, that's that's a great, great question. Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, the longer answer is points are just a way of putting numbers to like on-chain or off-chain quests, really, right? Like, you know, community members are then completing these things and using the point. The points get used for the purpose of like a leaderboard and potentially rewards later. Um, so currently, you know, what a project can do in the TokenSoft platform is set up an event, references, and this event references and includes like any information, the quests they need to complete. Our platform can display which quests and items have been completed, put the projects on a leaderboard within like the flow that's displayed in the flow. And then if when the time is right, our platform can handle the actual token distributions off those points campaigns at scale and with enterprise grade compliance. So um, yeah, the answer is yes. Something we do right now, something we'd love to continue to make that whole thing even smoother and like even better um, in the coming year. 
All right. Yeah. Points. It's uh, <laughs> we can't get around. Do you like it. points? Is that how yeah. How are your points doing? <laughs> I feel uh, like I've been in the space too long. I kind of feel like, ah, oh, man, this this year is going to be 10 years of me being in crypto. And yeah, points, yeah. I'm really like, oh, really? But on the other hand, yeah, it's that's just how it's going to be. I get it. I get points. I do. Like what you just explained. I get that it's there. Right. But uh, I, I would have been fine if we just kept it to tokens. <laughs> Yeah, I would not have complained. Yeah, people but love there points. Have been... Airline miles, you know, these exist yeah, exactly. all over the place. And there have been so many bad airdrops. Uh, like we we gotta grow towards some kind of a better way to distribute airdrops, and this is just one of those um, steps yeah. along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. No, yeah, I'm not sure. Go ahead, yeah. please. Go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say. Yeah, I mean. You know, not legal counsel. I will say having talked to legal counsel that's in the U.S. is I don't think points are going to save you um, from the, this SEC. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think so either. Like, you're trying to say that. Like, I'm pretty sure this SEC is going to say, like, oh, yeah, that. that's an expectation of profit. Like, points clearly. Like, yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> so just I don't think one side comment. Anyone uh, thinks that. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's just more, more buzz. Uh, that's right. the way I look at it. It's like you, you make it already a little bit tangible for all your users that they're doing something mm -hmm. yeah um this is uh going towards the end of our podcast and i want to ask you do you have a question for our next guest so the next guest will be uh fuse do you have a question ready yeah so there are a lot of l2 networks which i think is awesome by the way i'm curious what truly makes fuse different and then on a deeper level, how Fuse maintains this differentiation and therefore value uh, to the space over the long term. Um, also win token. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the last one I can answer there is one because Fuse actually right now is a layer one blockchain, but it is choosing to become a layer two to be really more part of this modular future. So I think your question will uh, be very helpful for our next guest to really explain why, because that is, I would say, the main yeah. question to ask them. Why are you moving from a layer one to a layer two? So it will be interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to that answer. And for everyone that's listening, if you are as well, then subscribe to the channel and make sure not to miss the next episode. Thank you, Noah, for being with us today. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Seb. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, for sure. And for the listeners, if you are in the USA or anywhere for that matter, and you're interested in partaking in token launches, or if you are a project and want a clear and regulated token platform, which is non-custodial, let's say that one more time, check out the description of this video. All the relevant links are there. And I also want to thank Liquify once more for supporting this podcast because Liquify, well, we are partners with Tokensoft and we are here also to support these newly launched projects with top of the class infrastructure like RPCs, custom dashboards, and validator services. Yeah, thank you, Noah. Anything else you want to chat about? Like, uh, did you enjoy the questions? How do you feel about it? It was great. Really appreciate you and the Liquify team. Thanks for having me on. We'd love to talk with projects that are looking to launch and help them uh, get unblocked and uh, continue to build in the space. Thanks so much. I would say, all right, then one more question. Which of the projects that are upcoming are you most excited for? Ah, you're going to make me pick favorites. Oh, uh, you can say man. two or three. I mean, if you have man. multiple. Okay, all right, all right. I got, I got five. So I all talk right, with go. hundreds of projects, right? <laughs> um, I'm just going to go super fast. People can check them out elsewhere. Yeah, sure. So, and some of them are obviously household names. So Eigenlayer, I think fundamentally changes the space. Monad, a completely new type of L2 doing Wait, some really awesome stuff. are going to use Tokusoft? Uh, I, no, I, I can't talk about current pipeline, uh, but anyways, <laughs> and then, right. uh, 10, 10, formerly known as Obscuro, also a very, very novel L2 doing some amazing stuff around privacy. D wallet. We just had a podcast with them. Actually, our tokens off podcast, fundamentally re-architecting the way that wallets work in a way that also makes it like your wallet can natively cross chain, super interesting stuff. It's, um, and then the last one is extremely early. Um, I'll give him a shout out. Uh, really good friends with the founder, Proximum. And uh, I've talked to literally hundreds of projects over the last 12 months. And I think it's one of the most fundamentally interesting projects I've seen. It's basically using 
calculations around the speed of light for any sort. It's a deep end project for any um, to basically verify trustlessly location. And that location can be used as an on-chain primitive or even used to secure networks, kind of eigenlayer-like security me mechanism for new chains that are looking to launch. Um, and uh, yeah, it's doing something super, super interesting. So this wow. is the projects I'm excited about. Yeah, that like the deep in space, we only just started with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's mm -hmm. so much coming I'm there. Sorry. Yeah, there's a lot coming there. That's very interesting. And the speed the speed of light all right all right all right it reminds me a little bit of like uh, the early days of chainlink that they were talking a lot about um, how chainlink oracles could help in africa with uh, weather and insurance for farmers uh, but i was always like yeah but how are you really going to do that trustlessly and now you you come with the speed of light all right all right yeah yeah basically prove light can only move so fast you can do like verifiable delay functions with these like, you know, crypt cryptographic hashes to basically know how long, like exactly within a thousand meters or so where these different nodes were located. And uh, then you can use that instead of like proof of stake, proof of location, you can split the world up into a bunch of different squares to conquer the network. You wouldn't just have to buy up areas. You'd have to conquer land. It's awesome. It's a very, very cool project. So I'll, I can give you all the links to all this stuff and you can put it in for the listeners. So. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. Super interesting. Yeah. Also with the D wallet, like, I think it's sort of the holy grail to have a really cross chain wallet that works well. We're not there yet, but that's, that's where we should grow towards. Yeah. So very interesting. The, the, it's the best solution I've heard so far. Like I said, they've spent years on, they've spent multiple years building this out on their cryptographers themselves have kind of like redone some of the cryptography behind it. Some of the private keys fascinating it's an awesome project so well super cool we have a, a lot to dive into so yeah thank you so much exactly. for coming once more thank you zeb it's awesome to be here and really appreciate it thanks again